Hello and welcome back to Virtual Mount YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about a multimedia redirection for Azure Virtual Desktop and Windows 365. If you ever had a really bad experience on Azure Virtual Desktop or Windows 365 where you're looking at videos on either YouTube or BBC News or CNBC or Fox Sports or something, and the video is taking up lots of candy CPU and memory, um, multimedia redirection is going to solve that problem for you um, because we'll go into a bit more detail late, later, but essentially multimedia redirection offloads um, the processing in the video onto your local client and therefore it reduces the CPU um, impact on the uh, actual AVD or Windows 365 session host and it gives a much, much easier and better user experience and the video playback's a lot smoother and um, because it's actually rendered um, on the local client. So exciting to get into today's video. So we're gonna basically gonna go through and show you how to configure it. And then we're gonna get can test it. And we're gonna show you the results. Um, and then we'll just do a quick summary of the ends. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Norman Glocken, AKA The Virtual Mank. And on this channel, we review the latest stuff around our virtual desktop, Windows 365, Intune, Entry ID, DAS, VDI, that kind of stuff. So welcome. If that's the kind of content that you like, please hit that like and subscribe button and let's get into it. Okay, so now let's actually take a look at what the service is in a bit more detail um, and then we'll actually enable it on an AVD and a Cloud PC device and then we'll give it some testing. So I'm just going to head over to the Microsoft documentation um, which basically gives a bit more information about what this is. So multimedia redirection redirects video playback and calls in a remote session from Azure Virtual Desktop or a Windows 365 Cloud PC or a dev box to your local device for faster processing and rendering. Okay, so that's essentially what, what the service is. And you'll see here um, a nice diagram which Microsoft have created for you. So uh, the remote media source is gonna be like, I don't know, YouTube or IMDB or something. And um, we'll go into a bit more detail about what websites to support this soon. And then it basically, this is your remote session, so you, this will be your session host, and then it's basically passing through all the processing and onto your local device, right? So your local device is gonna be de 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 doing the decoding, um, and it's gonna be doing the rendering of that video as well, right? Um, and that's what enables the really smooth experience. Um, but I said the most important thing is, this is gonna really affect the, uh, how the users perceive the experience, but most importantly, um, which is cost of your environment as well, because you won't have to give as much kind of CPU and memory um, to those sessions um, if they do watch a lot of video content, um, because you're offloading all that video content processing um, onto your local device, right? And more recently as well, uh, Microsoft gave the capability to basically do WebRTC um, called redirection. So that'd be really useful for any um, core software that you're using, which you use WebRTC, and we're going to do the same thing. We're basically going to offload all the processing um, from the session host onto um, the other client as well. So that's also really, really useful. Okay, um, so what what do we need to do to enable this? So um, if you're using Windows 365, obviously you need an existing cloud PC. If you're using Azure Virtual Desktop, you need an existing AVD session host. Um, and you actually need to install some software to get it to running, right? So you need the latest version of Edge or Google Chrome. And then we need to install the C++ packages, which most people have installed anyway. And then we can either configure this via um, Intune, um, or you can configure it via group policy as well. Uh, but most importantly, we need to install some software, right? Um, so there's a, a plugin which you install um, for Google Chrome and also Microsoft Edge. And basically that plugin um, enables all the redirection capabilities. So you can configure that plugin um, via group policy or Intune. Um, but basically we need to grab um, that install and download it. So you can either do this manually, which obviously I wouldn't recommend, um, or you can use some other method of deploying that. Um, you can use Intune um, or you can do it manually. Or uh, I've personally used Nerdio to do that. Um, so if you you this very quickly and um, so you'll see here um, we've got a scripted action which runs this is part of the default uh, Microsoft scripts and that basically just pulls down um, the read the the, the client um, and then installs it onto our session host for us as well okay uh, but as I mentioned you can do pretty much the same thing via uh, Intune or SCCM or whatever um, your method of choice is of deploying software um, and then that's pretty much all you have to do. Um, so we need to enable it. Um, so this what we're going through shortly. Um, so you can use group policy uh, to do that or Microsoft Intune. So uh, this is the Intune settings that you need to put in there. Um, but 
yeah, I'll, I'll show you how to do it via group policy. Um, so there's a policy settings that you could download and deploy on there as well. And then once you've done that, you'll get this. Um, we'll go through and do some testing shortly. Um, and then that's how we can essentially uh, verify that it's all working and hopefully give your users um, a nice browser experience when when looking at videos. Um, the other thing to mention to say is this has been tested and verified on these websites, right? It doesn't mean it's only limited to these websites. It just means these are the ones that have been tested, right? Um, so these are actually the most popular websites um, on the internet. Uh, so that's how they, they made this list, how Microsoft have made this list. So um, yeah, so it may work on other websites. Um, if it doesn't, you can configure where you want to enable them when you want it disabled. Um, but if you look at any, if you, if your kind of users use these websites on a regular basis, um, then definitely look at enabling um, sort of multimedia redirection because it'll really enhance that user experience. All right, so that's enough theory. Let's actually go and test this and see what this looks like. All right, so now we're going to test it. Um, so I've pre-installed it onto one of my session hosts, okay? Um, Nerdio did all the configuration for me, so I don't need to do any of the group policy stuff, but I'll show you how to do it anyway, just in case um, you need to do that. Um, but yeah, everything's been done. So basically, I've already logged on to a session host, right? So um, I've already found a website that we're going to test this with. So trailer for the Penguin um, off IMDb. So let's actually see what this actually looks like. Uh, and then what I'll do as well, while it's running, I'll show you the resources which are running locally on my device so you can see that redirection um, actually in action. Right, right. so this is my device. So you can see at the moment, um, I'm using da, 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 like 5% CPU and 25% memory. As I mentioned, this could be either a cloud PC or an AVD session host. Um, so we'll just click on Penguin. So this is the, the website which I'm using for testing. So the first thing to know is this thing in the corner here. Right, so this is the extension that we've got. So I'm just going to click on that, and then you can see some options. Um, so you can enable it. These are all configurable by policy, by the way. Um, so I can enable that if I wanted to, and that will basically automatically attempt to use it um, on our websites. And um, we can turn on an overlay. Um, we can also redirect the video outline. So this is quite useful because it shows you um, when it's been used, right? So if you're not sure whether it's working or not, um, this is a good way of doing it. Um, and then we've got the client versions as well. All right, so let's give it a test, shall we? So see what this looks like. So I'm just going to click the, the play button. So straight away, you can see here, we've got a um, red around the window, right? So this shows that it's actually using um, the, the redirection. So you can see here, the video is quite smooth. Um, so I'm just going to go to that. So you can see I'm only using my CPU has hardly gone up, right? Um, it's not really doing much at all um, and with that video playing and then if you go to Microsoft Edge and um, we'll see some processes running there um, so the interesting thing is if I go to now for example if I go to just do that in full screen again continue to be like extremely smooth um, so I can go there and click on there and stuff so yeah a really really good user experience um, on this desktop so let's actually see what this looks like on my local client device right and this will show you um what the redirection is actually doing so if i go here so this is my gpu okay um so you can see here and uh, the gpu has actually been used right so this is the actual process using my gpu so we can see the the video encode and um, so that's the video um, but more interestingly as well, if I go then look at the uh, networking, so if I go to get some processes, um, so first of all, here's my remote desktop session, right? So you can see um, it's using the network, right? So if I just go up by network, so that's all the network bandwidth which has been transferred locally um, onto the device, right? Pretty cool. Um, so again, you can see it's streaming. So this is the sending the actual video um, onto my actual um, device itself. So and if we look at performance, again, if we just sort it by CPU, your memory, uh, test manager, yeah, you'll see all of it there. So, um, so yeah, if I just go back to here again, smooth running, um, really, really impressive performance. And it, the, if you think about it from a performance capability point of view, like if I've got 10 people on the session host, like all watching videos, maybe they're doing 
training on Udemy um, or they're, they're viewing one of the, the CNBC sports or something, um, you can imagine how massively this would help, right? Um, because it would mean that they could all watch their videos, but they wouldn't have any um, performance impact at all. But I think, secondly, it's more about user perception, right? Because VDIO does sometimes get its bad rep because you try to do stuff on it on virtual desktops with like watch videos and stuff where it struggles with because it's not designed for that. Um, so this really helps that uh, by offloading all that multimedia and processing onto your um, onto your local device. Okay, so that's what it looks like. So now actually go and see how we would configure this via, um, via group policy as well. Okay, so how do we enable this if we're using group policy uh, to manage the devices? So I'm just going to flick over to my other screen um, and then we'll show you how you do that. All right, so basically um, you need to download the, the latest Edge uh, policy templates. Um, and then if you go to uh, computer configuration, administration templates, uh, Microsoft Edge and extensions. Um, so there's a setting here where you can configure extension management settings, right? Um, so just go into here and then you probably can't see it, but um, I've actually copied and pasted some settings um, that you could get from the default website. So let me bring those up to here. Um, so these are the settings which you can um, enable. So you basically just copy and paste um, these settings and that will basically enable um, the extension to be installed automatically um, on any hosts which this group policy applies to. And then there's different settings that you can put in there as well. So you can like hide um, stuff that in there as well. So just reference that and then all you literally have to do is just click copy um, and then go onto your settings and then right, let's go into there, paste that in there as well. And you can't see it, but it will paste those settings into there. And then that will mean that those settings will then be applied. So pretty simple. And then you just obviously need to make sure that you um, apply this group policy setting. So I've got one called like enable multimedia direction. So you just make sure you apply that onto your session. Hopefully. All right. So there we have it. That's the, the end of today's video. Um, I hope you've found it useful. Um, something which I definitely recommend uh, enabling if you do watch a lot of video content or your users watch a lot of video content because it really enhances the user experience, but most importantly, reduces the impact on the session hosts um, because it means that um, there's less impact on the session host, they, or you can fit more users onto those session hosts, and therefore it's going to reduce the, the total cost of your um, as a virtual desktop environment. Right? So, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Thank <music> you.